front of us. Yeah, yeah, hold on. We just hang on to our cousin. It's dangerous right now about what's going on. Oh, I attending the National Association of Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Contractors Convention in Las Vegas. And congratulations to you on your 100th anniversary. It must be a special source of pride to you that your association is the oldest and largest in the construction industry. Since this convention is celebrating 100 years of history, you might be interested in a little White House history. President Andrew Jackson had the first running water piped into the White House in 1833. And about 20 years later, I'm told Mrs. Millard Fillmore, in the face of great criticism, installed the first running water bathtub. President Franklin Roosevelt put air conditioning window units in the residence, but it wasn't until the Truman renovation that central air was installed. As for heating, well, around the White House, there's usually enough hot air to keep things warm. At the Association's Bicentennial Convention, a century from now, it will probably be a world we cannot even imagine today. I hope at that convention some future president will be speaking to your successors, telling them he's working to keep the economy strong and the nation's liberty secure. And I hope if they refer to these times, they'll say of us that we didn't fail, that we worked together to bring America through difficult times. And as people like those of you today who will make sure America remains healthy and free by doing what you've done for a hundred years. Building businesses that are the base of our economy, businesses that provide jobs and opportunities to our citizens. So again, let me congratulate you on your hundred years and thank you for what you've done to build America. Cut. Gates, please. This will be nice. I'll have to keep my father's shoes. Fine, sir. They'll be ready in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, do you put that name tell you that day I, on the phone called her Gloria <laughs> and I didn't even know so I wrote her a note and said I know your name is Doria. People call me lots of weird things. It's kind of a very strange name. Very cool. I'll be done. I didn't know that. Five. Okay. Okay. All right. I read and that's good. There was a line in there about underdeveloped countries and I thought that was kind of Switch now do we come to dialogue? See there, that's. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen in a speech there when that one sheet goes flipping off the <laughs> the image there, and uh, <laughs> but fortunately the other one's coming right on. You can't read that, huh? Can't you read that? <laughs> no, there was a little separation there in a couple of the pages, and yeah, well, I could see that happen on the transport. Uh, Oh, yes. Okay. I think that's the one I thought you were going to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I looked at the question. He crossed the United States in just a few hours. And he said, and forgive me, some complains about the d dinner. <laughs> 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 Could you tell us the emotion you felt on the inauguration evening when uh, Jimmy Stewart and uh, General Omar Bradley saluted you first time as Commander in Chief? Well, that was that was quite an evening of emotions for me, as you can imagine, to have that well, two gallant men, two generals, General Jimmy Stewart of the United States Air Force Reserve, and then the Soldiers General, everyone from World War II and who was in the service then had to love, General Bradley. To have them saluting me, I knew that the regulations don't permit returning a salute in civilian clothes, but uh, I guess that was about the proudest salute I'd ever given. Could you tell me your feelings about uh, Jimmy Stewart as a, as, a, as a patriot? Oh, Jimmy Stewart, you remember Maybe you're too young to remember that back before World War II, we had the first peacetime draft in our history. And uh, Jimmy Stewart, big star in Hollywood, his number came up and off marched Jimmy, Buck Private, and ended up in that war as an officer flying a B-17 on the Hamburg run over Germany in combat. And he is now a general in the Air Force Reserve. But uh, that was just completely natural for him to do. He wouldn't have thought there was anything other that he should have done. Mr. President, do you have a favorite story about Jimmy in the old Hollywood days? Well, it isn't exactly in the old Hollywood days, but yes, I do. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy's a great friend, and he's of everyone in Hollywood. I don't know of anyone that doesn't like and respect Jimmy Stewart. He's always been the same. But it was out on the campaign trail in 76, and Jimmy went along and introduced me. And I mean, the campaign trail is hard enough for the candidate, but at least the candidate's up there taking a, a few uh, cheers and applause and so forth. Uh, but Jimmy was going through all of that day after day uh, just to help. And uh, invariably, the master of ceremonies or the toastmaster at the dinner or the banquet would introduce uh, Jimmy as a great Hollywood motion picture star and so forth, and maybe mention a picture or two, and, and uh, then Jimmy would introduce me. And I would get up, and invariably I would also turn to the Toastmaster and say, if you'll forgive me. In Hollywood, we're very proud of Jimmy, not only for his profession and what he's done, but he is Brigadier General, or I said Major General, Jimmy Stewart in the United States Air Force. He flew, as I said, the Hamburg Run, World War II. And uh, there'd be great applause and so forth. Well, one night at a banquet, the Master of Ceremonies, uh, now wait a minute. I'm lousing up the story here. Uh, Let me start again. Yeah. Why don't you ask the question? <coughs> I would, did I say Major General? Yes, you did. You oh, started to bring it here. Can I tell the story again? I corrected myself. Yeah. All right. Yes. Major General Jimmy Stewart. Ask the question. Can so I ask then we. Oh, all right. Uh, let me ask the question. Yeah, take it from the start. Okay, fine. Uh, Mr. President, could you, do you have a favorite uh, story about uh, Jimmy Stewart? Oh, yes. <laughs> in 76, he was out on the campaign trail with me. And a campaign trail is tough enough for the candidate, but at least he's getting cheered and applauded now and then. But Jimmy was there to help. And he'd usually introduce me. And at the various banquets or dinners, uh, the Toastmaster would introduce Jimmy Stewart as a great Hollywood star and name some of his pictures. And I would inevitably get up and apologize to the Master of Ceremonies and say, uh, uh, may I add that Jimmy Stewart is respected and loved in Hollywood for more than his profession, his acting. Jimmy Stewart flew a B-17 on the Hamburg run in World War II. Jimmy Stewart is a major general in the United States Air Force Reserve. Well, there'd be great applause at that. But one night we got to a banquet and the Toastmaster got up and not only talked about his motion picture career, but then said he was a brigadier general in the United States Air Force Reserve. So I got up and again apologized to the Toastmaster and said, if you'll forgive me, it's Major General 
Jimmy Stewart. And again, great applause. When we got back to the hotel that night, Jimmy said, uh, uh, Ron, uh, uh, that, that, that fella tonight was, uh, was right. It, it, it is Brigadier uh, General. I just, just hadn't corrected you before because it sounded so nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. In fact, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Thank you. Mr. Rich Little could just eat his heart out. <laughs> <laughs> Better. All right. Uh, yeah. that, does it? That's all? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's enough to announce, friend. Dave, Dave has it. All right. You want me to all make you cry? You're telling about Jimmy yes. and his son and all? Oh, I remember him one night at a Hollywood premiere. What was the picture about Rommel, General Rommel? And uh, he was coming out of the theater. This isn't what I was going to tell you, but Jimmy was coming out of the theater and just very quietly said, isn't it a little soon to be making them heroes? Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> the story I was going to tell you was a man in Hollywood, went to the same church that I did whose son was overseas in World War II. And he sat down and wrote a poem. I still have a copy of the poem, the most beautiful poem. Wrote about when you were a little boy and you hurt yourself or bumped your knee or something. It was your mother that comforted you uh, because uh, uh, men aren't supposed to embrace. She hugged you and so forth. And he went on with that, and all in poem, in a very nice poem in this. And the last line of the poem was, I'm sure, my son, if you were here today, we would embrace. And he mailed it in the mailbox down at the corner. And as he got back to his front porch, the telegraph boy was there to hand him the telegram that said his son had been killed in action. I can't tell it without. <laughs> well, I know. And it was just, you know, you think of that, all the years he waited and finally decided it's the best way he could tell him.